All right. Good morning. Good morning, my people. Good morning, my name. Good morning, the whole Africans, wherever you may find yourself. We you say welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. The good thing is that the journey has begun. Yep. Not like we are waiting for some random somebody to come and get it done. And the important thing about it all is that we are consistent in what we're doing. Yes. We are consistent. Yes. So for the longest time, Africans have never witnessed consistency in their lives. Mm -mm. Lie to, uh, especially by their political class. Not mm -hmm. that guy was saying that politicians, for you to be a politician, you just have to be a liar. There's no that you can't separate the two. Okay. That's just what they do. So our church, they've lied to us. Everything that we thought we knew, mm. all of them, they have been lies. Lies mm. of lies. People are dysfunctional, trying to figure out who they are when they are clocking 70 years of age. People are divorcing as we speak, even mm. though their children are grown, because they just can't fake it anymore. They just yep. can't it anymore mm -hmm. and the good thing about all of this is that the alternative is there if you look there's alternative to this madness to this yep. disorganization to these lies lies fake fake happy and way happy and way that you can actually walk in a straight way and be successful it's possible africans that we can be consistent walk in a straight way and be successful yes no they have taught us to be corrupt Mm. They even will go on the air and say that we are fantastically corrupt. Have you ever mm. heard that English before? Fantastically <laughs> corrupt. Because they made it possible for us to function in a corrupt environment. But for the first time, we are saying, uh uh, no more. You do not dictate who we are and how we're going to run this life. Even though the uh, side belongs to your forefather's state, state, we are saying, eh, get out of here. We're done. So welcome to the program. Today we are going to point out things that will again open your eye. Uh, please help us to share, like, subscribe, hit the notification button, all those fancy things that we needed to do to get us where we need to go. Mind you, because we are doing the work of God, you know, darkness cannot comprehend light. So we know what these people are doing. We know how they don't um, want people to see the show. They block it. One night, my husband was going through his face, but all of a sudden, there were these live shoes everywhere. But one guy was literally putting his hand in his nose and seeing what it is, and there was two million people watching. And the other one was eating fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> fried chicken. And people we are watching. I'm not kidding. Fried, she was eating her own fried chicken. So, my dear, we know the games, but we are here to deliver our people. We are not here to count numbers. We're not here to play number games. We're not here to play Facebook algorithm. We're here to deliver our people from ignorance because once we know, I know our people. Once we know what to do, <laughs> I actually Facebook, I use it for firewood to cook our meal. So we know where we're going. Welcome to the program. My name is Mona Chimsa. Guys, if you call me Mona Chimsa, I got this morning that was cool. My name is Mona Chimsa. Guys, so welcome to the program. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Yes, yes. I'm a chai saga. Mona chai saga. Yes, yes. Our God is with us. We are not here alone. We are not doing this alone. Uh, we came because He said we should come, and that's why we do this job with so much boldness, boldness and confidence. So, um, you're welcome once again. Um, good morning from here. My name is Dr. Epi Simon Okube. Uh, Lexington, Kentucky. So please help us to share, like, subscribe. Those on YouTube, we see you. We appreciate you. We know some of you don't log in, but you're watching. If you can click that subscribe button, it will help others to see it and then watch it as well. So like also, because it will encourage others to watch it when they see what you're liking. And then those on Facebook, try and follow us, Daughters of Truth, Instagram, uh, Twitter, we are all those places. So please be part of this work because in the time to come, the world, your children, we ask you, what did you do when this was going on? Some of you will say, yes, I was dedicated to the work daughters of truth that we are doing. 
I was here sharing, liking, subscribing. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much um, for being part of this. So um, food for thought is what we want to give us now as you are sharing and liking before the show starts proper, proper. So as you love and care for others, remember that self-love is first human instinct. For you to learn to love your neighbor, you must first learn to love and care for yourself because you can't give what you don't have. If you don't love yourself, it's impossible for you to love another person. You simply cannot give what you don't have. So while you're sacrificing for your loved ones, remember to preserve yourself because you need to stay alive and well in order to continue to do what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Epi. So I'm still sharing. Let me share. There's two brothers that always tell me they can't see the show. So help us to continue to share and remind people to log in and join us in the program. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are happy to have you. Like we always say, we are all stakeholder in this. We are not here to command and control you. We are here to dialogue and discuss and then come up with superior arguments that will get us where we're going. So we are done with... Uh, Abuche, everybody bu abuche na gari. Uche, uche, no nye, no nye. Yeah, it's okay to have uche. But we'll table all the uche and then we'll see which one is better and we'll move with it. So, and then when you, if you are smart enough, if your critical thinking abilities, they are, if they are on and they are working, put your argument and say, let's move. The longer we are there going back and forth, heard, your brother have already stood up and, you know, echoed what needs to be done. But no, because you think we have 10 years to sit in a meeting that's supposed to end in 30 minutes. You want to come out and re echo what your brother said, wasting time. It's only in Africa that those kind of nonsense will happen. Go and look at the American counterparts. 30 minutes meeting, they are done. They will send out the memo. These are the minutes. This is what was discussed. This is what was decided. No, we are done. Go to my people's meeting, Okobo said. And when he was coughing, uh, Sister Queen interjected and said, Stop talking. We are done with that. <laughs> so when we're done with meeting, there is time. That's why our young children are not joining our, our, all the associations that we have all over this place. They are not, they are professionals. They don't have time to sit in it. Time consuming, time wasting. Time wasting. And boring. Yeah. I can't even join in, not talk of the children. <laughs> <laughs> America, you may have only Saturday, Sunday off. Then you want to then waste it four hours arguing no. about something. We're meeting in three hours. No, mm -hmm. no. So, my people, we have to do better. Let's be concise, you know. Talk about what works. Does it make sense? Have we looked at the, all the pros and cons? Boom, it makes sense. Let's move on to item two. Someone, and sorry, as you go, it reminded me of uh, uh, IPOD's meeting in those days when they would keep us for four hours. <laughs> only one calls. Because there was nothing to be done. There's no strategy. Nothing was on board. So you sit down for four hours calling, okay, uh, doctor, this person came, this person was around. My dear, go ahead. I don't want to distract you, but I don't remind. I just remember that I'm like, wow. Yes, my dear. All of them, all those, you know, long stake, painstaking meetings that we've all, you know, attended during our lifetime, we want to use our time wisely because time is of essence. Here in America, time is money. You know, you walk double they pay you more so who wants to spend it talking jazz and anyway, we're welcome to the program so continue to help us to share like and do all those uh fancy things that we need to do i know that a lot of you have seen our topic for today we usually send it out and uh, people start you know texting us back once they get that topic <laughs> so anyway we welcome all your opinions we welcome your ideas but like i said this is a uh, one person said last week uh, university of daughters of truth yes my brother you are on point you are directly on point this is true university where you are allowed to use your brain you must use your brain because we have no time to waste so as our topic goes managing the terminal phase of nina's successful joint jailbreak strategy. Managing the terminal phase of Nina's successful joint break strategy. For meaningful progress to take place, 
like I mentioned earlier, superior idea must lead. Not necessarily the noise makers, you know, of all men, uninformed people. They will be shouting, you know, talking nonsense. They can speak English. Now they are jumping from one tree to another. See if they're in an evil forest. That's not what we're saying. We are not here to shout. We're here to look at the superior argument and move with it. Your idea must have to be driven by clear-minded, courageous, and committed people that have this idea. And then they will passionately, with zealous, push the idea through because they know that's what will work. They have looked at all the risks and the benefits. They have looked at all the pros and the cons, and they know this is what needs to be done. So they don't have one hiding in his bag, and the other one is hiding in my husband's uh, 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 underwear. And the other one is in Grega in the kitchen. That's not what we're talking about. The Nigerian indigenous peoples cooperating as Ninas. They've been working for over 20 years, working on a liberation project and looking at the caliphate containment strategy that they have used to hold us down, have us running in circles, have us leaving our geographical space and going somewhere else to live. And they have broken this into five specific action-driven phases, which we'll be showing you a copy of it today. Because I radio. No, we are talking about this is it. If we are now going here, look at it in a written format. So you yourself can look at it and see if it makes sense. And those are the things that we want our people to engage, even all these so-called fake politicians all over the place. Engage them. Nobody should tell us, hey, hi, I'm not an easy. Or turn the thing to we do, we do, we do, nation, we do, we do. We are not here with we do. We want you to show us so that those of us that are still reasoning can now assess this document and see if it makes sense. These five part driven actions, they are based on internationally acceptable protocol for all indigenous people all over the world who seek to determine how they live and manage their affairs in their ancestral home. So we are not doing something that is out of protocol. We are not going to shoot people and kill people and say, oh, you and oh, they are killing us, so where bank can handle? You and don't have time for you. If left to you, they will wipe you out. They need your oil. The work that Nina has done through a joint effort and alliance is targeted at bringing lasting peace to our territory, even the you know entire West African uh, sub-region and beyond, to curtail crime and halt the constant bloodletting and massacre going on in that region for so many years, so many years. If you want to see that, that's why people will be on air asking, do you guys have water to shower? Do you, do you even eat? Because all they show is us dying all the time, killing ourselves. You know, we don't make guns in Africa, but most of the guns, all the wars, all the killings are happening in Africa with the guns that other people made. For this project, that Linus is piloting, which is now in its final phase to deliver the expected outcome. A good measure of fidelity to the original plan is important because any unjustified radical departure could produce a radically different outcome as we see in the southeastern region of Nigeria. Why? Because they have detoured into unnecessary violence, which puts arms into the arm hands of untrained non-state actors different warlords and their gangsters. This type of detour, we understand, is part of caliphate manipulative scheme. They love the fire that is going on down there and their hope Uzodema is in charge, through which they constantly cultivate greedy mercantile freedom fighters, politicians, social influencers, because they will tell you, I know you, I know you, I know you, I know you, are we talking about the church and the traditional leaders who will, for a handsome reward, hold things down for this caliphate at the expense of our people while they suffer and die on a daily basis? So today we are going to examine how this vast ungoverned space currently housing the fell state of Nigeria could be transformed into a viable people-centered political entity through a two-step fundamental constitutional reconstruction. 
I know it's too many words. Don't worry, as we go through the video, we'll break it down for you. The most important thing is that the document is there to show you how to go through this jailbreak. It's no brainer. Don't be running from one evil forest and to the other one. Don't go and hide in the wilderness and throw your phone away. Don't turn our land to a place where widows are more than regular people, where children, orphans are everywhere. It is unnecessary. The job has been done, my people. It's like a story of Christ dying for you and you decide to go and buy a cross and, and nail yourself there by yourself when somebody else has already given his life for you. Please, please. Me penonte. What an ihani, you understand what is being said. Forget about the noisemakers. Forget about the nde ngomai. Forget about the nde ozoahia. Forget about all these things that we've been using all these years. Boronaga. You know, happy and we now, guys, we think we are surviving. If you don't do it right, at the end of the day, it will fall apart. It's like building a house on a wrong foundation. Yes, it might hold you for the season, but over time, it will, it will not sustain you. So we are looking for a sustainable strategy that Ninas have put on the table for us to gain our true freedom once and for all, because we need to move on. Time waits for no one. Go ahead, sister. Thank you, my sister. Indeed, time waits for no one. And we are moving from, oh, angry black people to responsible black people, my sister uh, Ndidiweche will always say. So it's not about saying, oh, I'm angry, they're doing this, they're doing that. Then you are reactional, emotional. Oh, hey, if, if people are going this side, you follow them, follow, follow. Like goat, sheep, you follow without thinking, without reasoning. Where am I going? What is the essence of what I'm doing? How will he get me to where I need to be? What are the steps? What is the process? Because we have told you for anything to be meaningful, there must be a well thought out, clear process that you are sure that this thing will lead to this thing. This one, if I do it, it will lead to this one. It's not a way village like my sister will always say. Uh, let's be going first. We'll see what happens. That's irresponsibility. Very irresponsible. We're not supposed to act that way. And the only reason we are going through where we are going through is that we have been irresponsible for years. It does not make sense that you'll be sitting on resources and people are coming to steal your resources and there's nothing you can give your children. And you're popping out children. You have the audacity to be entering the and coming out and popping children out. A cousin of mine was telling me a story about some people that were kidnapped. I was like, yes, that the people that when we are here trying to say this is what is coming, they said they don't want to share, they don't want to be part of it. Why wouldn't they be kidnapped? And then the wife, when they kidnapped, she was shaking, shaking, shaking. She could not even do anything because she didn't even know anything. She went and told them, oh, they asked her, are you the people coming with the Mopo? He said, yes, we are the people coming with Mopo. Because he don't know that we're warning you that that's you coming with Mopo wearing uniform in Southeast. Is the, is the, like you have prepared yourself for sweet. You are sweet you're, gonna, you're gonna be eaten up because this is what is getting the youths angry. Then you come to intimidate them with your mopo in a place that we are crying there's insecurity. We need to fix the entire place. You know, you, you will go and hire your own mopo and I hire your own security and then begin to come to intimidate the people. They will eat you raw. They eat hmm. you, raw. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. You are not listening, so you don't know. So that's why we're telling you that, you see this thing? We are all in it together. If this one doesn't get you, that one will get you. But if you can come now, let's reason together. That's why it's called joint jailbreak. Joint. We're going to work together. You're not going to do it by yourself because as you are trying to do one, another one is coming from your back. But if we were together, why this one is watching east, the other one will watch south, the other one will watch north. Everybody, eyes will be around, all hands will be on deck. Then we work together and get to where we're going. Because we are in this together. We are prisoners in this coven. Hmm. We are prisoners in this giant prison. We need to work together to get it out. However, working together doesn't mean that you can be putting shit on the table and expect me to eat the shit with you. It has to be superior idea, superior argument. You have been making noise for the past how many years? Ask yourself, this noise I'm making, what is the meaning of it? 
What's, what's the meaning? Where are we going? Then you follow people that know road. So this first video will show you. You see that the black man, and when we say black man, it be, that's male, both male and female, is beginning to stand up to those that have been holding us hostage. And by the time you stand up, that's what we call it the black responsibility era. Because what has been holding us down is that we are not responsible. We have been yep. irresponsible. Very, very irresponsible. Very, very irresponsible. Every black man, every black woman. Together, we are going to share this blame. We have been so irresponsible. You know why? Because we have lived with these people. <laughs> they are not that intelligent. Even the Fulanese are not that intelligent. The only reason they are succeeding in their evil scheme is our irresponsibility. We did not care. We have been behaving like vagabonds. Roaming up all everywhere. Nobody cared. Yes, you give birth to seven sons. Scatter them all over the world. Then you guys start drinking pan wine and be happy that you have done something. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, this is the era of black responsibility. In this video, you're going to see how they're calling these people out. And we are saying, it's not only when there's war, the war that you people created, that you start calling us to come and help you to fight it. And mm, then, and become, become an equal partner. Yes, you remember we are equal partners. <laughs> when you want to fry us in the war that you created by yourself, mm. then you start touring all the, all the countries that you were never before. The countries that you've never been before in Africa, all of a sudden you start going because you want us to be part of the war. We've told you on this platform, there will not be third world war. The war that will be is the one that you people will kill yourself. Africans will not join you in your war anymore because we have issues to deal with here. We have war. We have been in war going on. And the war that you people created. So we want to stop the war that we have created. We want to fix our land. We are not interested in your war, white yeah. man. Are you not listening? We are not interested in your war. If you create war, go and fight it. The one you created in Africa, we are working hard to stop it. Get that line. Go ahead, my sister. Um, that you know, we we know how democracy functions, and we've come to tell you you do it, and it will work for you. I think it leads to to tell you you do it, and it will work for you. I think it leads to to defeat. So we need to think in different ways. I also think that uh, one of the lessons uh, we also need uh, to learn and. I need to move this in a little bit further. She does, she's responding to American um, blinking. Uh, that came in to call them equal partners or call African people equal partners. Okay. To uh, come in and uh, seek to teach a country um, that, you know, we, we know how democracy functions and we've come to tell you, you do it, you know, it will work for you. I think it leads to, to defeat. So we need to think in different ways. I also think that uh, one of the lessons uh, we also need uh, to learn and perhaps draw lessons from one of the experiences we should draw lessons from is the reality that there has been a lot of external interference in Africa. And a lot of that external interference has fueled conflict in many African countries. Now, by external interference, she means you motherfuckers in the United States. <laughs> That's what she means. Okay. has fueled instability, has supported opposition groups against liberation fighters, and so on. You know the history, perhaps better than myself. This is a reality. So <laughs> in my uh, uh, view, uh, while uh, there may be concern about Wagner Group or Van Dijk, which is another security group, which was in Mozambique, there's also a concern about countries 
uh, that have mineral interests in African countries and are there as a destabilizing force. Hmm. So I think we need to look at the full plethora of problems that give rise to insecurity, bad governance, and the absence of democracy on the African continent. It's not a one country problem. It's a world phenomenon uh, which is results from Africa's rich mineral wealth that has made it a significant target of external players that don't always have the interests of Africa at heart. So uh, let me bring in Max on that. So she's. You know, it's only a sister that can sit there and talk to a white guy like that, right? <laughs> yep. You yep. know, our brother, you know, our brothers will not do it. No, they'll be shaking. Yeah. They'll be, they'll be shaking. Mm -hmm. They will be telling him to hurry up that the girls yes. are waiting for him in the hotel yes. room. They've hired 17 girls for them, any color, any height, any shape. Yes. Yeah, it's only a mother, a sister, one who understands the importance of making sure that we are leaving inheritance for our children, that will look him in the eyes with his entourage and tell him that they are the criminals causing all the problems in Africa because of the mineral resources that we have. And guess what? Heaven did not fall, Umugan. No. Our men, heaven did not fall. No. But our sister addressing our enemies, people that don't want us alive accordingly. We need to be, we need more of people that yes. can stand up to these people and tell them who, what we need and who we are. Yes. When are we going to start leaving things for our children? When are we going to stop running around and thinking about this, how many houses I can live in, is all the cars. When are we going to start reducing money down on our virtual list and start bringing up uh, uh, authenticity and, 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 and self-preservation? When are we going to do that? Why is it that it's only African man that money, 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 go, 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 why is it that we are the only one money 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 no that's why it's so easy for us to sell out yes and become victims so easy and become victims you guys have left african women and their children so vulnerable that anybody can use them for anything Aye. anybody can and still you call yourself a man mm. you allow your fellow man to come to you and emasculate you and be using you and you're there running. I'm running for Nigeria. Yes, mm. I'm going to change it. It's only mm. governance I'm going to do. Governance is the problem. Monkeys and baboons for Kun everywhere. Jumping from one evil forest tree to another evil forest tree. And we're saying we cannot continue to watch you guys keep us in a prison. We need a joint break, jailbreak. We need a joint jailbreak to come out so that we can begin the work. Jailbreak, we are, we are not talking about even building a nation that we'll be proud of. Just coming up, coming out from slavery, because Emma, we keep calling it fancy name. We are still under slavery, British enterprise slavery. Our resources are being used to take care of their people. Take care of all the things, you know, the elderly getting paid, the this thing getting paid. I was just wondering the other day, sister, I said, I was at the gym doing something and I saw this video of grandmothers, they said grandmothers and kids. Grandmothers were running around everywhere with their kids. They went on vacation. They were throwing things. I said, oh my God, where in the Africa have you seen a grandmother playing around with their kids like that? Mm. She's sick. Crippled. She's sick. Warning. By the time you see your grandmother, she had turned into an ancestor. Yes, crippled. Crippled. from <laughs> life life she may be in her 60s because she walked through hell she will look like she's 80 something she can't even move yep have you ever seen a grandmother running around with their grandchildren back no, with which legs <laughs> arthritis reading legs mm -hmm. the knees that needs to be replaced where uh, my dear go ahead my dear so it's on you our people if it's women that will represent you better, vote them in, in your area. We are not talking of uh, Nigeria because that's the, that one is a collapse project. In your neighborhood, people speaking for you, representing you in your area. If it's women that will do what you see in your heart, do not look at the stomach of those men that have swallowed all our wealth inside their stomach. And they're nine months pregnant. And they're mm. walking like this. 
like Idi Amin. Do not. Please. Look for people that will speak for you. And in the same thing, we are saying ideas. Ideas rule the world. Speak to your politicians. Speak to your church leaders. Speak to your traditional leaders. Talk to them, your social influencers. Talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Sample their brain. Check what is inside their head, not their stomach. We are not interested in their stomach anymore. They have swallowed everything inside it. We want to know what is in their head. Engage them. All of them, whether they're leading you in your family, they're leading you in your church, anywhere that anybody's leading you, engage them, talk to them. They're not gods, they're human beings. Engage them and bring out what is in their head. Get their ideas on the table. By the time you sample like 10 ideas, you will know the one that is superior, the one that will make sense, the one that is logical to you. Ask questions. How do you want to do this thing? If you ask them, how do you want to do it? You say, eh, I will do it. You say, no. How? You say, yes, I will do it. You say, no, 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 no. This is the era of black responsibility. We want to know how you will do it. Step by step. One, two, three, four. When you finish A, you go to B. When you finish B, you go to C. And then we get to where we are going to. In doing that, we must also go back to history. Because we mabai. If you don't know where the rain began to beat you, you will not know where it got dry. You got dry. So we need to go back to history to understand the sickness of this political entity called Nigeria, this geographical zone and space, nickname, AKA Nigeria. You need to know where the sickness began. So we will go back, go to YouTube, go to Google, begin to search, search deep. Stop wasting your time watching people that are picking their teeth or eating chicken. Or stop that. Or husband and wife that will strike up a, a, a quarrel so that they will have a followership of one million and use it to make money. Stop watching those things. I was surprised with some of my uh, 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 relations. Oh, they are watching coral bead. I say, what is coral bead doing for you? No, but you want to watch it because you're irresponsible. We are telling you that the land you are living upon, where you are giving birth to children, yeah. is being set on fire. It's about to be on fire. You are watching Coral Bid that is opening waste. You see how irresponsible the black women and black men have become? Mm. So we are going back to know where this whole thing, and it's time for us to face our truth. Whatever that truth is, we will face it. If there are war criminals, we will bring them to book. We must face the truth. We can't sweep the truth under the table anymore. The January coup was to stop jihad, the killing of Nigerians. The Nigerians were not even aware that some people were planning to come and kill them. What you're seeing now did not start now. They planned it. In fact, that January coup slowed down the jihad. Slow down this plan you're seeing, this thing that they're executing now. The January coup that they term Igbo coup. That BBC, not the BBC, term Igbo coup. So that Igbos will be killed forever mm. trying to liberate Nigerians. Mm, 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 mm. That coup was to liberate Nigerians. That's what it was. And Igbos lost 3.5 million forever trying to rise up and challenge the British Empire, the imperialists. We are still paying for it. And anybody telling you that it is an economic problem, tell that trader to go back to his store, wherever it is that he's trading. <laughs> because we're not here. This is not about traders. This is not business. This is not economic business. No, this is war. Our people have been dying for years. And we are saying enough of this bloodletting. We're not playing. So listen to this. This is a putter panel that was set up after the um, Biafran genocide that they call Nigeria Biafra war. It wasn't a war. It was a genocide. And eventually the war... And they will acknowledge it when the time comes. Yes. They the will put it in the... Let the right people come on board. We will make them come and confess what they did. They will. And put it out there. They will. In fact, as a caveat, we are calling on Gov uh, General Gowan. He's still alive. IBB, Obasanjo, um, Ibrahim Babangida, even Buhari, all of you, your war criminals, we are calling on you to begin to tell our people the truth.
This yep. with maroring and doing this and doing all that, it will not save you. It will not save you. You will be alive and get rot, you know. And my God will be coming out from your body if you don't confess. Heaven will, they will not open door for you to go to the next generation, to, to the next place you're traveling to. You better begin to confess what happened that 3.5 million Igbos were massacred. Until today, people are now being killed in Northwest, Northeast, as a result of this thing that was done. Go on, your people are dying because of this evil that you covered up. Begin to confess and confess and say the truth. The truth that you know, as you know it, and every other person will say their own truth. And then we begin to solve this problem. We are going to the root of the problem. Watch this clip. We will post the entire video in our wall. We shared it also yesterday. Uh, it was a sister that sent it to me. Um, a shout out to Sister Ify. So, um, watch it and then we'll take it from there. Thank you, sister. Now, when you are from the records, we saw that when you are being cross examined by the council to the commission in Enugu, you said it was the north that waged war on Biapra. The north, in fact, the first division from the north descended on Biafra from Onsuka. Is that the first division of Northern Nigerian Army? Of course, it is not first division of Northern Nigerian Army, but it was commanded by the Northern troops, that, Northern officers and men. And that's your basis of saying it was the North that waged war on Biafra. I said actually it was Nigeria that waged war, not Biafra waging war on Nigeria. So no, you said you said the North in your evidence. It Especially. must be Lipsus Limbai. Thank you very much. Now you said. It was in your book and in your evidence that the coup at 1966 January was long overdue. That was what I felt. That was my opinion. Do you still feel that a military coup is the best solution to political problems of countries such as Nigeria? Now, as you are there now on all The situation in 1966 cannot by any means be equated to the situation now in Nigeria. Now, do you, do you agree? Now, what I'm saying is, maybe you don't understand my question. I do understand your question. In 1966, how I felt then might not necessarily be how I feel now. Okay. Do you still believe that military as an alternative to political government or to democratic government is the best solution? Right now that I'm an old man, you I feel otherwise. Okay. And you know that that first attempt you made was the beginning of the military in Kaisen into democratic rule. You are very right. Thank it you. is not the handover or, you know, button changing that you keep having okay. after that. Okay. Now, the Ohaneze petition and your evidence said there was to be a planned jihad on January 17th. It came from your evidence. I said it's in my book which yes. was published in 1981. Listen to my question, please. Yes, I, I said so. Now, immediately after say, talking about the jihad, they said the coupists. There is nothing to call. Listen coupists. now, those who planned the coup, the there same are thing. coup plotters. Not yes, the coup plotters, it doesn't matter. The coup plotters were to install Chip Aolo as the president. That's what they planned to do. Which of them? Those who planned the jihad or your own? Those who you planned. See, you talk about planning the jihad. Those of us concerned with the coup of January 66 did not plan any jihad. Yes. In fact, they carried the coup, they moved fast to preempt jihad. That's what I said. Listen. And no. it's so well recorded. No, it's no question of well recorded. You see, you planned a coup. Beautiful. The Ohaneze petition alleged that that coup was to prevent a jihad on the 17th. Beautiful. The following sentence in their petition says, those who plotters wanted to install Chief Aolo as the president of Nigeria. Something is amiss somewhere. Is, Some, it, is it your group that wanted to install Chief Aolo or the jihadists? That's all I want you to clear to the commission. The book I tendered here is very specific on it. Aolo was to come and be the head of government. That's your arrangement? Our own, yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Now you said elsewhere, that failure to execute successfully the coup in Enugu yes. was what led to the civil war. 
You see, again, you haven't read my book, or you didn't even listen, hear what I said. Listen, I read your evidence before the commission in Enugu. Then certify, that's, certify true copy from the That's commission. not what I said. Let me tell you exactly what, what I said. What did you say? You did a coup in July 1966. All right, I'm, we're going to post this video in its entirety just for you to um, take time. It's uh, almost an hour plus of uh, interview. Um, so you can understand where they are going with that information. Go ahead. Thank you, my sister. You see, it's not now they started lying to us. They've been lying to us. How can you have an Igbo coup to install a Yoruba man? Why? Because he was the Yoruba man at Wolowa, the one in the election. So that election that was supposed to take Nigeria into true federalism, in the structure that our founding fathers had in mind, true federalism. But what did Britain do? Britain did their own first coup. In the first video, we told you, we showed you our sister saying the external influencers are the ones creating instability in Africa, creating poverty in Africa. By the time the local, the native, the people of Africa, the indigenous people, plan what they want to do to move them forward. These external criminals will come in and destroy everything. So these people now moved because why did they make that switch? Why is it that Wolowo won? And Wolowo won the election followed by Azikiwe. The third person was Amadou Bello. But Britain moved and handed over Nigeria to the third person. And this third person, why did they do that? Because there was a jihad. This thing you see Buhari doing now was what that person, that Ahmad Bello was supposed to begin, dead. That's the secret information that these military young officers got. And they moved to stop that jihad, which is what, this is what explains that they had to start with the people planning the jihad and their willing tools. So it was to take out the people planning jihad against Nigerian people and their willing tools. And that jihad then was supposed to start in Yoruba land, which explains why some Yoruba sons were removed, because they were working in collaboration with these jihadists. But Britain, because they have the power of media, BBC, twisted everything. And at the end, 3.5 million Igbos were executed and killed. Over 2 million children starved to death. And the world moved on. And you think Nigeria will stand? And then you have Pitobi coming from that place of injustice to come and say that what is the problem is economics. <laughs> Just like uh, 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 um, what's his man's name that said that is food, that wanted to make everybody a Marjorie. Yes. Uh, uh, Ukura was, uh, mm. uh, Okoro just said, oh, that everybody is hungry. Just give them food. They will be fine. Okay. He has this <laughs> food for him and gave him to eat first. That's what happens to people that do not listen to their mm. people. Your people are crying a type of cry. You want to turn it around, to make it your personal thing to, for your selfish gain. You know what will happen to you? They will use you and dump you and nothing will happen except you begin to reason properly. So we are telling you people, in this video that is about to play now, this is part of that jihad, that fulanization that the January 1966 tried to stop, that Nigerians did not pay attention. Just like now, Nina is warning Nigerians, don't go this way. This is what you should do. They did not listen. That coup was supposed to stop this jihad and other jihads are continuing. In a compromised system, even the people cannot even collect their dead bodies. We will play this game. This is first-hand account from Plateau State. Because we told you they will conquer you state by state. They divided you into states so that they can conquer you easily. It's divide and conquer. That's what we told you. We have told you that. That the states you have, the 36 states you have, they did not do it for your own good. They did it so that they will conquer you. Because if you check in the way they divided the states, Igbo, they will split you into many states. Idoma, they will split you 
some this side, some this side, so that you will never come together like a force that came in Biafra to fight the war. So they broke everybody, all the ethnic nationalities into pieces, into pieces, so that when one is talking A, the other one will take B. So it's intentional. And this is the result of all that they have done in those years. The massacre has begun and it's not going to end except you remove the tool that they're using to enter your land to massacre and kill your people. Watch this first-hand account. We'll come back to you. Thank you. The plain truth about the attack on the 23rd on the five villages that uh, were attacked on uh, on Saturday night, we make calls. Even the STF commander was fully informed. He did not send his men there. What he told us was his men are already there. When I went there, I saw about four civil defense for uh, Mopols, there was no any military man on ground of the truth. And all of these eight people are of the same religion. They are all Christians. And if you see the way they suffered, my brother, you will pity for them. In every attack, I get information two, three weeks before it happens. And immediately I get that, I try to alert the security personnel. To a point in time, I was blamed that I'm the one foiling the crisis or the attack. How do I know it? Sometimes they insisted I must tell them the name of my informant and where he's coming from. I said, no. And even the connivance between them and the government, they tell me. So when you put the message across, the government doesn't take it serious. And most especially this administration, his, the, the governor's aide doesn't even pick calls of anybody. Even yesterday night, I tried calling the governor on the attack going on on Doroa. He didn't pick my call. So the, the missed call is there. He will not reply. Sometimes his uh, PA will send, give you a message noted and it is gone even at the heat of the crisis. So you call the, the STF, the, the spokesman will tell you they are not aware, and it goes. And most especially, the attack is perpetrated by this uh, 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 military men. They aid them in carrying the attack. So we always give information before it happens. The CIB, they, they, they are everywhere and they bring information. But the most painful thing is that the people they are giving them this information are part of the attackers. And they will not even want the police commissioner to know about it. Neither. They will send it further for, for further investigation. They don't. They don't allow it to go. So they must remove those that are on those decks so that information will flow. So when we were on our way to go and recover these cops, the corpses and the injured. The same STF commander, with the advice of Brigadier General M.A. Bello, told him that we should not pass through. And he was the one that called the defense headquarters and the CDS told the, 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 the STF commander, Major General Antony, that he should not allow anybody to go and carry any corpse. He did. He delayed us for two and a half hours. The police that was given to us to assist us with about 13 operational vehicles, that's helots. He couldn't allow us to pass. In security versus security. So they had to turn back and go back to their base in Barakin Ladi. So from there, I insisted I must go because I can't allow my people to just die like that without any barrier. So I 
I forced myself in with some few people with me, and we entered. Immediately, we get uh, approaching the villages. We started seeing the Fulanis grazing on the farm that is already uh, 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 being wheat and then planted. They were grazing on the farmland. We have the videotapes and everything. Then, about five or three meters away, we started seeing some decomposed corpses in the bush along the road. That was when we started piling these dead bodies. And finally, in Ngar village, we recovered about 78 dead bodies, apart from the missing one. And then in Ganarop, we recovered 33 dead bodies. All right, we'll stop this video here. We'll post it, the rest of it on our Facebook page. Um, go ahead, Sister D. Thank you, thank you, my sister. So you can hear, um, if you when we post it, you watch it, you can hear him saying that in village, that 87 villages, have been taken in Plateau State, one state. 87 villages have been taken. I know these villages, you are, you are from Igbo, wherever you are, you know where your village is. If they attack any village, the next village might not even know that this village is being attacked. And they would have wiped you off before the next village will know what is going on. And you know they work with the traditional rulers. So if you watch this video, you see where he's explaining that the first of all, Check all your traditional rulers are now under the payroll of this Fulani federal government. This is systematic. They are under the payroll, so they are working with them. The Fulani imposed governor in a plateau state, this man said, according to this man, is always in Abuja. So he will say that he did not know when anything happened. If you call on him, you will not get him. For what? For handsome reward. They pay them for these jobs. They recovered over 86 bodies mm. decomposing in different states. And in different cities, villages, in Plateau State alone, over 300 people killed in these attacks. So how can somebody be saying that what they need to do is to bring somebody that is talking about economics? When we are at war, our people are dying. And we have told you that if 1999 constitution does not go down, the way they coronated Fulani loyalists, APC people, governor in Plateau, is the way they will, uh, in Plateau and Imo states, that's the way they will put in any other state. If any state is giving problem, like now, Benue State, you see Autumn is working hard to protect his people. But there's going to be an election by December uh, or, or 2023. So with that election, they will strategically coronate a Fulani loyalist. No matter how you do, they will do it because they have strategic places. Mm -hmm. The same thing mm -hmm. with Port Harcourt, with all the things that Wike was doing. So how Wike put all his money trying to get a, a PDP presidential ticket. What did they do to him? They did a brocatabra and removed him and put a ticket that will carry on with what Buhari has done. Somebody was typing, our brother is typing, our prince, uh, somebody is typing something about, oh, Buhari is a thief. Don't make this problem Buhari problem. It's a system problem. It's larger. The battlefield is wider than Buhari. Buhari just a one two that was used. We showed you the video of January coup, 1966. That even then, the things had started. So how will you now make it Buhari thing? That, oh, let's remove Buhari. If we remove Buhari, the system has been taken over. But we're telling you that that system was taken over through 1999 constitution. So there's disaster ahead. Like we want you people, we want especially PDP in 2015 when the election 
was coming going on and even after because even after that election that the powers that be made buhari to be the president because he knows he did not win that election pdp people were warned in their inner caucus they were warned of what would happen to them and did it not happen these seven years i didn't want to be seven years of horror and we warned you even 2019 you were warned again you carried on now the killings and intimidation we continue this 2023 we're warning you again that if you don't change the system if you don't change the system the killings and intimidation we continue why because these people are on a compass mission they are not stopping until they have conquered the whole territory let's listen to our brother uh, deliver to me because some people are speaking truths some people are deaf, but some people will keep speaking. Go ahead, please, my sister. He's still hanging around, waiting for 2023 to change Nigeria. He's a fool. Line 20, Daily Faro team me up and ask them to become president of Nigeria. 20 of, of me, 20. Multiply their brain power by 10, factor of 10, and then force them to operate the 1999 constitution with the governance system that it's that is enshrined in it, we shall fail spectacularly. The problem of Nigeria can never be resolved by personnel changes. The system is designed with impunity undergirding it, and it can never deliver anything positive to the Nigerian peoples. Be those Yoruba, Ausa, Igbo, Fulani, whatever they care to be. Make an Igbo man president of Nigeria in 2023 and force him to operate the, two, uh, the 1999 constitution complete waste of time. Indeed, we will continue to suffer the brunt of the wickedness of the Nigerian state. Every Nigerian is rendered stateless by the 1999 constitution. It is an iniquitous, wicked, and evil document. It has nothing good for the Nigerian people. And the longer we continue to fool ourselves believing, and let me enter one quick caveat. Our rulers are actually very intelligent when they care to be, especially when it comes to their own preservation. And I know as a fact that they're already making noises about restructuring in Abuja, the mace snatcher and the lawan and that one that calls himself Baja. All of them are sat there running Elta Skelta, coupling together some lies that they intend to sell to us as uh, constitutional, what do they call it, amendment. Let's be clear. You cannot continue to build on top of lies. You can't sustain that lie. And as long as justice is missing in a place, you continue to have strife. We need to tell ourselves the truth, and that truth is that the, only, the closest we can come to normalcy in Nigeria is to have a return to the original agreements that founded this country. Those are, agreements are very clear in their fundamentals. One of them federal system. Nigeria is today not a federal system. Let's stop lying to ourselves. The word federal was brought to life by the American election. Each state has its own electoral body because it is essentially a country within a larger country. That was what our fathers agreed. Nobody agreed a situation where a clueless man would sit down inside a rock in, also, and begin to issue edicts and dictates to every other person. Nobody, nobody signed on for that in 1960. All the constitutional conferences beginning from 1948 all the way to the 1951, all the way to 1960, each and every one of them was very clear and unambiguous. Nigeria was meant to be a federal system based on parliamentary democracy. There was, it wasn't by accident that our fathers settled on them on parliamentary democracy. They wanted to make democracy as close to the people as it could be. So it simply meant that if you're a parliamentarian, you knew your people, your people knew you. It was the aggregation of the parliamentarians that determined who became the prime minister. And it, they, they were also the ones at the regional level who determined who became the premier. So democracy was devolved. It was easier for the people to become involved. What we have today, is not a democracy. What we have today is not a federation. We've just become a nation of liars who readily accept okay. every uh, lie that we are.
<laughs> nation of liars indeed nation of liars do you know the reason why i'm laughing my dear they are walking into oil with fire and eh? he's been heated up to the highest degree temperature and these animals are going to walk into it and fry themselves like fried fish he's loading no? he's loading you pretending like you're not hearing what is being said it doesn't matter let people be gone he's the god he's the savior you will find yourself in a slaughterhouse where you will be killed. That's if you're lucky, you will be buried. And world without end will keep going on. And you will remain a slave in your own land. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Few may change for few because what they do is that they hook their friends up and give their money. And their friends are traveling all over where they have our people in diaspora to go and show off. Nigeria is doing well. We have money. They will even buy a house here and uh, invite the hungry uh, once in, in Obudo, able to come to their house and eat. And I go, oh, I'm not going to get on a senator. He's in Houston. He bought a house in Richmond. Are you coming? Yeah, they're going to his house. He has a swimming pool. Very irresponsible set of people. Very irresponsible. Some idiots will steal your money, come here and invest it. Then you, the monkey and baboon that left your land to come and find a place to survive, will now go and welcome the person because you needed the irresponsible. The irresponsible. The only reason why you guys are still functional is that the system here is put in place to force you to function. Moaya, you guys would have turned this place into Nigeria because you all are, everybody is a criminal, if I ask me. Everybody is a criminal. Anyone willing to participate in this election, knowing all the information out there, knowing the constitutional issues, knowing that people in Niger and Chad and everywhere else, they do have PVC to vote. Then you are the criminal and you deserve to die. You deserve everything the universe packed for people like you. People like you that don't want to follow Zohim, Nagapa Church, Uneme, Fasting and Prayer. If you want to vote in this criminal election, you yourself deserve to have whatever that is coming to you. It's a no-brainer. Peter Obi will lead you guys to your death chamber. They will pack you guys like sardine, close it, give you carbon... Uh, uh, monoxide and Peter B will go to his house and, and lay by the pool, pool, uh, pool side in London and nothing will happen. He will now buy 10 watches because now he said he only has one. He will be able to buy 10 of them with your blood on it and you're signing off on it. So nearly you guys, the so-called smart one, the ones that runs their mind, the ones, the lawyers without degree, the senior advocates, you signed off on it and then you guys will pay the price. When you go to this election, you are renewing the life of that constitution. And guess what it does? It empowers them again. Britain will congratulate them. U.S. will congratulate them. China will congratulate them. Any noise that you make, they will fry you. No, they wouldn't even fry you because then they may eat you, they fry you. They will let your rotten body, like our brother was describing, be down there while they're grazing on your genile or your yam that you planted before they killed you. We cannot say this enough. Genonte, you've been running in circles. You've been irresponsible. You've been faking it. You've been cheating. You've been doing happy and way. You will cheat, lie, destroy, and then you will go to church and pray. Yes, it worked for you for 30 days, but it's over. It's not going to work anymore. Like my sister said, let's come together and face that truth, Diana, but also whatever that truth is. Let's face it and fix it once and for all so that we can begin to live the life that we want for our children. Go ahead, sister. Yes, it's time to face our truth. This uh, hiding under the table, under the bed, bringing one candidate or the other because he favors you, because he's going to give you a contract, it's not going to happen anymore. Mothers will not allow it to happen. We're here. Umada, we are here. Because all this bloodshed is our children. You people don't know what it means to carry a child for nine months. You don't even know what it means to enter labor room. You don't know what it means to bring out one child. So that's why you can carry a gun and kill anybody you want to kill. We are telling you people that Nigeria is collapsing on a daily basis. Then foolish people want to drag us to 2023 election first before we fix it. They say house is collapsing. 
rather than say, what can we do now to make the house to stop collapsing? He said, no, let's wait until it's my birthday. Then when we have birthday party, then we can decide what to do. Are you not irresponsible? <laughs> Are you not foolish? Mm. Only wise people embrace Ninas. Wise, genuine people. We are telling people that the foundation upon which we are building is a faulty one. It's false. It's fraudulent. But because you're used to Appian way, you are the ones that go to school instead of going for lecture to take your notes and go through the process so that your brain will develop. No, you will never do that. You wait for others to go to class. And then doing an the exam, you copy, write, and have certificates. I say, I'm doctor, so-so person. I'm professor, so-so. I'm engineer, so-so. We have seen it now. Because we engage some of you. You come with big titles, but there's nothing in your brain. Mm -hmm. This one says, I'm a political scientist. I study political science. And you don't know the importance of constitution making? <laughs> what of politics did they teach you? Oh, the one they share money, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Yes, the one that if you share money... You sell the people, sell your people, then life goes on. That's your politics. People that studied law. Yeah, you don't understand that constitution makes a nation. If you tell you that we did not make constitution, you say, no, let's go for election. Appian way. Always used to crookedness. You're used to crook, crook, being crooks. Even in church, the Bible that God gave us, that if you read it, you develop sense. You will use it to dupe your people. Because there are sick people, mentally ill people, they fill your church, 100 million inside, and you're brainwashing them, and you are, then your heart, you are, you are, and your conscience is not pricking you. That this 100 million people, no, 100 million sheep following me, they don't have sense. They don't have authority of their own. They can't reason for themselves. You will lead them like Judas goats into where they will massacre. When they are massacred, you will enter the next uh, private jets. Off you go. Because it doesn't concern you. Your children are already studying abroad. Your mommy G.O. is having fun. Doing all sorts of show while you are sleeping with all the women in the church. Mm. And then she will have university to come and defend you. Because you are her meal ticket. You are the only reason why she's shining. So you are both criminals joined together. But you know what? Your time is up. Expiry date has come. Let's listen to uh, our brother, Mwodo. He's also a legal personnel. So he should know. Listen to him and see what he's saying. Listen. Please go ahead. Our brother... Ogumbo said the problem is that average Nigerian is a pretender. Yep. Brother, you nailed it at the head. That's it. They lie to themselves. They pretend. And they are good. That's their element. When they are lying and cheating and pretending, they are in their element. That's how they roll. And our brother Fechi said, not only pretender, but also liars and deceivers. <laughs> you can say that again. They lie to themselves. So they've been lying through and it's been working for them. But... The train has stopped. Where's the Bahana Aga with their lies? So we must face this truth that we'll be running from. It's like somebody, oh, maybe your husband is sleeping with your daughter or whatever. You know in your head you're sensing it, but you don't want to face it. So you, you begin to shallow forward, oh, fe crayfish, oh, fe de, oh, fe he de. instead of calling the punk out for what he's doing, you're pretending. Your daughter is giving you all kinds of signal that all is not well. Instead, you'll be lying to yourself. I can help you. may even go and get a second job because you don't want to deal with it. Guess what? You're gonna worry. Your husband will impregnate your daughter. That's what will happen to you. Forty-nine people elected. I mean, selected to write the constitution. Write the constitution. Forty people in Supreme Legal Council promulgated the constitution for us. Under General Abubakar, the government in which I served, I was in executive council. I never saw the draft constitution. And I was Minister of Information. It was my responsibility to publicize it to the country. On the day of swearing in of Obasanjo, we didn't have a copy of the constitution. I didn't know who was printing it. And my ministry was supposed to pay for the printing. And Obasanjo was sworn on a constitution that had not been read by anybody. And the National Assembly could not be constituted until four days after he swearing in it. Because there was
will not clean copy of the constitution. You cannot build a whip sand. And the country cannot live on falsehood. Lie, lie, lie. An old man, you see how he's so frustrated. So frustrated. He's so, so frustrated. frustrated. What is wrong with the people? You can't build on quicksand. What is wrong with people? You can't build on falsehood. Some people say, hey, let's continue first. Let's bring people to be first. That's some people that say, look at yourself in the mirror and slap yourself for saying that. You can't build on falsehood. We have built on, we have lied enough. <laughs> we have lied enough. <laughs> and you know what? Our lie, years of lies, have caught up with us. We are now in deep mess. How can Obasanjo swear a constitution that he did not know who made it? He did not know where he came from. That's how irresponsible these old men are. And he's still running up and down looking for which candidate to bring. <laughs> a constitution that was not ratified by the people. Where are the lawyers? Where are the lawyers in the land? Are you... Where are the lawyers? A constitution that was not ratified by the people. Is there any time you had a referendum where the people adopted that stupid constitution, that book of Lucifer? The people that were sworn in did not even see the draft copy of what they were going to swear. Oh! Aro, 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 Africa, Africa, who did this to you guys? That means that oh. starting from when that 1999 constitution, that every government has been illegitimate. Apart from the illegitimacy that happened when we said we don't have a federation anymore, it has been hijacked. Anything that you have built on that 1999 constitution is illegitimate. It's illegitimate. You read my lips. So no matter how long this fraud goes on, no matter the international communities that are busy building on this fraud and shedding the blood of my people, when you get to where we will get to, my people say, I'll pass you also, I'll go mine. Oh. When we get to where we will get to, all you war criminals will be exposed. All of you. Whether you're called Pitobio, you're called Atikwo, you're called Buhario, you're all the people that aided and abetted the killing of my people in Northeast, Northwest, Middle Belt, Igbo land, Yoruba land, everywhere black man is being massacred. All of you will be brought to book. The Holocaust, the Israeli Holocaust, they're still looking for the people that participated in it how many years after and tracking them down and getting them down. How much more the one that you just did? All of you collaborators, don't worry. Your time is coming. You see, we are moving slowly and steadily. It's a movement. It's not an organization. Ninas is not an organization. It's a movement. And as we go, it's like snowballing. More people are saying, eh, what did you say? They're keen in. They're keen in. And we're moving. And we're moving. It's like a submarine. You know, submarine would be moving under the waters. <laughs> people on top deceiving themselves and betting. Those Santanin opening their bum bum. We not even know there's a submarine under. Hmm. This thing, it will get to where it will get. Go ahead, my sister. Hmm. Criminals everywhere, liars everywhere, cheats everywhere, pretenders oh, everywhere. Thank you, Aya. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Robert Clark, a senior advocate of Nigeria, a legal practitioner. He joins us next as we continue our focus on this amendment to the 1999 Constitution. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you for coming on. Oh, it was my pleasure to be here. Well, the Honorable says that, uh, in, in fact, it has an interesting theme, that retreat that they have towards ensuring good governance, accountability in Nigerian federalism. And I did ask him, he says, look, that Nigerians may have a wrong impression, but they mean well uh, for this country. But looking at some of the provisions, uh, I know you've gone through this. You think they really mean well for good governance from what you've seen? Let us be honest with ourselves. We lawyers say you cannot build something on nothing. The Constitution, the 1999 Constitution, is a constitution that... I believe we should jettison completely because it does not augur well. After 17 years, it has created more problems for us in Nigeria. State for okay, so this is the channel news that all of you will listen to because I know you guys don't want to listen to my brother Tony Nadi, right? 
you guys will listen to the channel news and they keep telling you guys things because who do you guys are all criminals you guys are all pretenders liars and cheaters or cheats they've been telling you guys about this 1999 constitution on your the man the man that will come and deliver deliver economics to you guys <laughs> you will find that afghanistan is a joke you know natural this thing this this thing where you guys want so much when it comes home my dear you will not believe you will not believe the price you will have to pay and guess what i love my god he will remain god in Eliwe. he will remain there now or whatever he does and you will be frying because that's what you're asking for that is what you're asking for where are the senior advocates where are the so-called elites where are the people good men and women that want more for themselves where are the retirees that are going to collect their money? They will never see it. Where are the police officers that are being owed money? Where are the teachers that are not being paid? Where are the students that have been out of school for so many months now? Una and us all obituary. Oh, yeah, I forgot you guys were trying to go see your forefathers. Yeah, you're preparing to see your ancestors. Okay. So thank you. Go ahead, my dear. Yes, they are prepared okay. to go and see their ancestors. Our Fulanese will help them to do that fast because they're coming. And that's the beauty of what we're doing. You see, we tell people that this is like Noah's Ark. The new, Nina's movement is like Noah's Ark. As we are moving, preparing, it's only the animals hmm, that have sense that will enter the Ark. Those ones that don't have sense will be there following P2B, following article, following Tinubu, Following Obama and John, following IBB, following all the people that put us in this mess, because you know what? They are condemned properties, they are con condemned beings that will be destroyed. The flyers are coming. This is the way out. The legal professionals say we cannot build on nothing. Common sense says we cannot build on nothing. Your parents told you before now you can't build on nothing. This is a truism. This is something you just know. That if you are right thinking, you cannot build on nothing. But no, the foolish politicians, no, not foolish, the criminal politicians tell us to build on nothing. And we are following them because we can't think well. We insist that 1999 constitution and the lack of true federalism, true federal constitution is our problem. As a political entity, not all these things that story that you people are telling, because all this criminality, corruption, everything came because we don't have a working system. Like my sister will tell you, where we live, it's not because the people are holy, it's not because you don't have criminals here, it's not because you don't have corrupt people here, but the system has been put in place to checkmate any criminal. Any person that does outside the system, if you're driving your car, the stop sign is there. You pass. The toll gates, you pass. <laughs> Just your plate number that the cameras will pick. They will bring the bill to your house. They will mail it. In any state where you are, in this um, America where you have 300 million people, any state you are, you do anything as you're driving your car. You break law, do this, the plate number. And you know what? Plate number is only in one side. Though. They don't have front and back here because they don't have time to waste materials. <laughs> it's only at the back where the camera will pick you. Immediately you pass, it will pick you. Narrow it down. You will say where you are. They will mail it to you. Your address where. That's what you call organized system. And it's not one man that organizes it. It is the people. The people will set up the system, and the system will work for everyone. Tall, short, black, cripple, anybody. It will be a just system. But if you have a corrupt system, nothing will happen. I will stay there, Stamona. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have a corrupt system, that's why we tell you that these people are liars. This is P2B that told you that the Nigeria, Nigeria is like an engine, a car with knocked engine. That means you can't move the car. All of a sudden, P2B traveled to Britain to go and meet 
the owners of the enterprise, the prison yard that we found ourselves. And he came back and moved the ignorant youths that he's now the best driver <laughs> that will drive a vehicle without an engine. Is that not building on lies? You are, it's bad enough that you're lying to yourself. You are lying to our innocent, ignorant youths that don't know any better. That your system, your APC system, PDP system, ABGA system, all the system that P2B have been involved with. The system made our youth to be ignorant, not educated, almagiris everywhere. Now you are taking advantage of that. You're rubbing in on our pain. So move these ignorant youths in their energy still further into evil forests with 10 headed demons. Having all the witches and wizards backing you. Obasanjo, IBB, Amad, Bill, uh, what are those ones? Baba Hamed, all of them. All the owners of the coven. <laughs> the witches and wizards mm. backing you, promoting you, and pushing you. And you are driving our youth, youths and going. This thing will blow. It go blow. It go blow. Go ahead. Mm. My dear, we have to get a bucket of popcorn. Well, you will be working within the framework of the 1999 Constitution and its uh, its extingencies, its, exclusive its exclusive and non-exclusive non list and all of that. How would you carry along governors and people that are not pulling their weight? The Constitution might have its own problem. But that constitution is not what is keeping us where we are today. Mm. It is bad leadership. Mm. Notwithstanding the constitution, you can drag everybody along. You can drag everybody yelling and crying and say, listen, we're going to get this. We can still make the country productive. You don't necessarily need to. Anybody will tell you, how you go, why do we have economic council? Economic council in the constitution says, the state and the federal government will meet once a month to decide the economic future of the place. I am so disgusted. Mm. Oh, it's so terrible. And it, it, it's so disgusting. That's, that's the word. You see, we are where... <laughs> Uh, unfortunate, we are in an unfortunate situation. Ebo Traders Association <laughs> have presented us <laughs> by their member, Peter B. <laughs> a novice at legal matters. He wants to perform magic without a people's constitution. Mm. He wants to drag everybody along. Mm. Just as they drag people, people along in the market to come and buy fake bag and fake shoe. Sister, buy the bag. It's Italian made. Buy, buy the shoe. It's Italian made. It's fake. Oh. Fake shoe, fake bag. That's the system P2B is coming from. Traders Association. Where the experts trained on legal matters are telling us that we do not have a constitution as a result we don't have a nation. A trader <laughs> is telling us that I'm coming. Yes. I will change everything. And his fellow traders I believe in him and walking with him. Say, ah, when P2B comes, everything will change. These are people that we are shouting Biafra, Biafra. All of a sudden, it's not PVC. <coughs> Fulani, PVC. Talk of inconsistencies. Talk of people that yeah. their brain, like, they cannot think by themselves. We know that's what it is because we remember when we are in IPOB, 3,000 people will be watching us. But they were not hearing what we are saying. Because they just wanted, oh, these people are talking about uh, IPOB. Let's watch them. You think that human beings are watching you. You don't know that the 3,000 is just 3,000 of animals. It's just <laughs> 3, Over 3 million watching, uh, uh, what's that criminal in Finland, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Simon? They are the ones that moved to go and do obituary, obi idiots. That's where they have moved to. Moving like what, like... Water, no sense, no direction, no principle, no nothing. Somebody will not sit down and think and say, where am I going? 
What vehicle am I supposed to enter to go to where I'm going? What time will I arrive there so that I can make plans? Maybe somebody needs to come and pick me from the park. No, you just wake up and begin to walk up like Mungu. And they're dragging you, pulling you. He said, we are youths, we are youths. Even if you didn't go to school to learn about constitution making, don't you have common sense? My people will say, Kid, they are fools or they are never. You can see you're blind. What can't you hear? Can't you know the difference between A and B? We are tired of being dragged around. Please, those that know P2B, tell him where we are now. Nobody's going to drag us anymore. We are not going to be dragged along. We will sit down, dialogue, plan, strategize, put process in place that will give us the outcome we desire. We are not going to gamble anymore because you see what you did not bargain for. There is a, a remnant that are listening to us and they are paying close attention. They will not allow you to drag them along in your stupidity and in your foolishness and in your lack of understanding. You will not drag us along, and around and along anymore. We have died enough. Our people have died enough. We have been, our destiny has been destroyed enough. It's time for us to begin to catch up with the rest of the world. Our land will not be a warehouse anymore where the white man is building his society. Then he'll come to our land to pick up a raw material that he used to build the society where my people are dying. And the so-called leaders are fooling around and fooling themselves around. Please, everybody arise. Begin to share this video. Share this video. Get our people informed. It's so easy. Google, you find information. You will listen. There are people that you need to listen to. You will know that, oh, this person is making sense. And you too can make sense. So people will say, what is the way forward? I can see somebody saying, so what do we want to do? What is the way forward? Yes, in the nature of our show is that when we tell you the problems, we'll give you the way forward. We will always show you this is the light. This is where to go. This is Dele Farah to me again. Let's listen to him and hear what he has to say. Pay attention, please. Thank you. Okay, my sister, before we play the video, because we have some people here that are still confused. Yeah. You have to look at this from the perspective. What do I have to gain from your liberation, right? What do I have to gain? Like, do you really think we wake up every Saturday to come and be putting Ajahn Agari? That's what we do. Who stands to gain in all of this? Peter will be stands to gain if he wins the election. What do I have to gain? I mean, what is it that you think I have to gain? if not for the freedom of my people. Am I sitting here asking you to make me your president? Am I sitting here asking you that uh, the constitution is not the problem? Am I sitting here lying to you? Who are you supposed to listen to? Are you going to listen to the same politicians that created the perfect stone for you to be burning in hell? All of them. Americans know, even with all the good work politicians are doing here, politicians are liars. You cannot separate both. That's what they do. So those of you that are getting offended, too bad for you guys. Politicians are liars. You have to lie in order to politic. You can count how many of them, how many of them that have been consistent in all their ways. They have to lie in order to sustain their political state. So you, prince, I don't know which prince you're where you're princing from, that is still confused. We have nothing to gain that your total liberation and freedom so that you can go and get a job and take care of your family because obviously some of you don't have jobs. All of you, many of you. So you can do something meaningful and stop texting people in Obudo Ibo to be giving you stuff, giving you money. Somebody help me, this and this. Oh, help me the way you helped me before. We need our men and women engaged, especially the young ones. We need them to be able to set up a conference and bring in the world and challenge them and show them the latest technology that we have built for ourselves. That's where we're coming from. We need you to go to China and win the top contest. Stop running in the bush, yeah, drinking beer and came and in the evening, hmm? growing stomach, sleeping with all the girls in the neighborhood, getting them pregnant with twins and running away. We need you to do the right thing. 
So we are tired of the status quo. And P2B represent the status quo. Let's stop getting confused here. As mothers, we are getting annoyed and tired that even the so-called children that we are fighting for are very stupid like their fathers. Don't get it twisted, please. I'm an IPOB candidate. And I say to them, the difference between the leader and the followers is that the leader must first of all identify the destination and then persuade on the strength of his vision those who he wishes to have following him. But there are times, and we are in one of those times in Nigeria now, where we are actually in a leadership recruitment exercise. We are the ones who need to recruit our leaders. If our leaders are non-existent, and Nigeria has none, and Peter Obi has come out and is offering leadership qualities. He has proven himself in a state, even though there are people who challenge his records in Anambra, but it has traveled long enough for us to say that reasonably, he must have done well in Anambra. Now, if he has done well in Anambra and is coming to Nigeria, he must understand something. The primary issue with Nigeria is that it has been destroyed beyond repair destroyed by the years of the PDP, yes, but the job of destroying it beyond repair happened under General Buhari. So if you are going to be able to preserve Nigeria, you have to actually reimagine Nigeria and then sell your new image of Nigeria to the Nigerians. Because it's a democracy, it's not going to be all Nigerians that you can sell your ideas to. But if you sell your ideas to sufficient numbers as to propel a movement for change, then you are a leader. You can talk about moving from consumption to production all you care. But if the structure of the country is not one that encourages production because what it actually wants is to impoverish those who live in the space, how do you increase production? If he is not talking about restructuring now, and he is propelled into office on the basis of the illusions of Nigerians who are hoping that a Peter B presidency might change Nigeria, would he be exercising the powers of a military dictator, or how does he intend to work with this skilled National Assembly? The only way Peter Obi wins mm. is if he is able to galvanize a national movement. The only way he can galvanize that is to listen to the pains and yearnings of at least a majority in four out of six geopolitical zones in this country. We desire to see Nigerians freed from the shackles of this fraudulent constitution. Why is it impossible if he knows, and he should know, he's intelligent enough to know that the critical problem with Nigeria today are its evil governance structures, which are rooted in the 1999 fraud, Decree 24. Why is it impossible for him to galvanize us behind his own vision of the future that is rooted in restructuring? You All right. We cannot say it enough. Go ahead. No. So, you see, um, we're here to dialogue. And in that dialoguing, you have to be brought up in information so that we can make a meaningful discussion, can have a meaningful conversation. This is not a case of, oh, I can speak English more than that. Let me just be speaking gibberish. No. Listen to what this man is saying. We are not saying, oh, to P2B is totally written off. But his sincerity will be tested by what he does next. All these ignorant people are following you. Good. Good energy. And we are saying, everybody is saying, any literate person is saying that the constitution is flawed, that the foundation is flawed, that all the evil we are seeing, all these things you say you want to fix, they are coming flooded from the flawed constitutional foundation. They are manifesting as 
leadership failure, endemic corruption, economic and security crisis. And the key to solving it is fundamental constitutional reconstructioning. This is a challenge that anybody is giving to P2B, any right-thinking person. And he must take it. If not, that means he's insincere. It's time for him to be wise and urgently redirect his campaign towards where solution will come for the people. From economic reforms to constitutional re-engineering is something you would do before the election. You won't do it after the election. Because once the election finishes, like my sister would say, the criminal white people will call you and congratulate you and they swear you to uphold the constitution. You will never change it. <laughs> and you know what? We know he might not uh, be sensible enough because when you see the people supporting him, you see the same political class that we have rejected in APC, PDP, all of it is the same people sponsoring him. Obasanjo, these are the people behind P2B. IBB, these are the witches and wizards that put us where we are today. They are the ones bringing him. So what changed? And that's why he told you that constitution is not a problem. The only key to our salvation, P2B has broken it. He said that key is not needed because he is ready to take you around economic journey. <laughs> okay, jazz up and down making movement without any activity nothing you're not moving anywhere yet no you have activity but there's no movement you're in one place doing chaka, 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 chaka. somebody will see you you're you're doing something but what you're doing has no meaning so he's obviously working for the caliphate and britain the owners of nigerian enterprise yep therefore we call on the indigenous nigerians to redirect their energy to what we deliver them. Nina's campaign is running parallel. We told you people that when these mad people will start their campaign, we will continue to run our campaign because we started before them. We had a destination, we had where we we're going, and we are still going there. Nothing is changing it. So as they run, because they moved their campaign earlier because of what we are doing, they decided to move early to engage the youthful uh, mumus uh, that will be following them, dancing around to engage them. We are not stopping. We are continuing. So we are talking to the indigenous persons, the people that are dying. Nina's campaign for two-step fundamental constitutional reconstruction is two-step. It's not one step. Two-step. Those two steps means, first of all, before you change a constitution, you know, amendment. We're not saying amendment. Because you can't amend what you did not make. You did not create something. What is your business amending it? When you have the power to make your own. Power belongs to the people. So you will make your own. So two steps. First step is to determine who you want to form the nation with. Are you here or there? Are Fulani is inside or outside? Where are we? You make that decision first. That's the referendum. And then you can now begin to make your constitution or whatever you want to make. Based on the people that say they want to build your country or they don't want to build your country. It's simple. It's simple. So it's not something that you are running around. Oh, what do we do? No, no, no. It's very simple. And it's an internationally acceptable protocol. That's what they've done everywhere all over the world. Is a set standard. It's not something that you have to go to school. Some will say, I don't understand. You see, a medical doctor, when you have appendicitis, you get to the hospital and you examine, you're examined by a medical doctor and <laughs> the surgeon says you need surgery, appendix, surgery to cut off the app a a a a a appendix. You don't need to say, oh, I, I need to understand the process. Teach me. How do you want to cut the skin? Uh, where is the appendix? Self? Uh, let me learn where it's located. No. That will take you going back to medical school for years before you learn that. And you will die. And you will die because you are in the emergency room. All the doctor expects from you is to say, okay, I'm sick. You can hear me. I sign. 
Nobody expects you to. So for those of you that say, oh, I don't understand Nina's. I don't understand what they're saying. I don't understand how they bring down the constitution. I don't understand that. You might not understand because you're not trained in that area. The area is called jurisprudence. It's a part of law, science of law. So for you to understand it, you have to go and study it and be trained in that area before it will make sense to you. However, we are asking you. My dear, are we able to make it in happy and way? Maybe they will understand. <laughs> <laughs> There's no happy and way in this way because for you to have a referendum, you have to go through a process, like years of process. For those of you jumping out now and say, oh, self-determination group, we want to referendum. Referendum is not what you enter inside kitchen and say, bah, referendum. <laughs> there is a process that you have, we have put in place before now that we now end up in referendum. It's not something you say, okay, referendum, yes, mark it, good. No, no. It's a process. And Nina's have been part of that process. And we have, we told you that we are in the final phase of five, I know some of you have not seen this before, and it's been in public domain since 20 years. We are only bringing it forward for you. Phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five. We are in the terminal phase. Phase one. What I brought up, Pussy uh, said, he said, many people don't understand the ingredients that goes into Coke. Then okay. they are still drinking it. Exactly. <laughs> You're drinking it. You don't know what is inside it, how they prepared it, or that you will drink it because it will quench your thirst. So you see, you lie to yourself when you say, oh, how will the constitution come down? Hey, what is the constitution? How will they make the constitution? You are not trained in the area. It's a profession. Even those that are lawyers, you have to specialize in jurisprudence before certain things will begin to make sense to you. So people go and read up. For those of you that can read and study, because here we have things that you can do. You can do emergency reading. and get. That's what we did. Mia, I don't hide to say that. Uh, 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 Barrister Tony Nadi is my jurisprudence uh, uh, teacher. Anything I don't understand. Oh, how is this one connected? I have common sense. I know what I want. It's just like when you set up business. You don't need to know business administration, uh, be a secretary, be a messenger. Be a... No. You have a passion to set a business that prepares, that transfers leather into shoe. Then you go and set up the company and get all the people that will work in the areas, those that will work on the leather, those that will design the shoes. You employ them. And then the work, that's what you are as an indigenous person. You have a land. You have resources in your land. You need to understand how to have a life that you want. And there are professionals that will help you do that. So you have the first, the first phase, research and constitution phase, well, consultation phase. All the people went through and all the OPC was consulted, uh, um, Masab, Arewa, uh, 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 Niger Delta, all these people, all everybody was consulted. Even Buhari, the Fulani people, they were all consulted. But you know what they did in that zero phase when we we're beginning? They introduced Sharia law. When they saw the plan, that the people are about to work on the journey of self-determination. And it will take 20 years to work on it. Bam! They introduced Sharia law and removed themselves out of the 1999 constitution. Removed themselves out of the Nigeria we say we were building. So they seceded from Nigeria. And that's why we say, if there's anybody that has seceded from Nigeria, is the 12 core not states that introduced Sharia law instead of the 1999 constitution. That's why when you get there and build your uh, refinery or bring your beer, they will break it into pieces because they are living in a different country. It's called Fulani country. And mm -hmm. they want to connect it to Niger, to Chad. They've already Nigeria. connected it to Niger. Yeah, they have connected it. That's why you see them building roads, building, they've conquered that zone. Building road, building trust, but they are taking resources from your land, your oil, your gas, your resources. They are using it to build their own nation. Mm. And Mumu Madus are walking up and down. Peter B is walking up and down. His running mate is Fulani from Mauritania. 
that when they get to the road, they will kill off Peter and take off this and take the Sierra and move all those masses where they're going. You think the people you're working with don't know what they're doing? Hmm. Oh, when they bring out the video of when, when they are doing what they were doing, my dear, would you sign everything they ask you to sign? Exactly. When because they bring the video of you doing whatever in a hotel room, isn't it over? Of course. They, that's what they do. They always blackmail them. Like they told him his name, Peter B, is in the Pandora uh, uh, papers. They've already done all that investigation. They know where to hold him, hold his ball. When they squeeze it, he will sing. <laughs> you shout there with Chimo. <laughs> all the people that are following you, you throw them inside the full forest. I -yakata. Mm -hmm. Like it, like uh, uh, Nam Dekanu threw all of you inside the full forest. He finished his own assignment. He's in the uh, DSS uh, lounge, VIP lounge, having fun. He has finished deceiving you people and distracting you from Nina's work. That's what he was sent to do. The next person is p 2 It's all distraction. So phase one, you had about Pronaco. You had all these things. We're going to paste, paste this. <coughs> Excuse me. We post this. Please go ahead, Sister Muna. No, no, no. Go ahead, my dear. I'm making faces. Oh, are you coughing? Okay, yeah. We'll post this in, on our Facebook so that you will understand. When we say we want the work, whatever you're going to use to deliver my people, we need to see it in writing. It will be. Of when I say English, you are educated. You have all these professors around you. Put your strategy on the table so that we'll make sure that it makes sense for our people. Just like Nina's hat. So we have this thing here. We're going to post it on our Facebook uh, page. So that you can begin to learn these phases that we are talking about. That now I'm not going to hear any Bujas. We are almost at the last, well, not we are almost, we are on the last phase. That we are waiting for people to begin to receive sense. For you to stop listening to the noise of fake Biafra that is going to come. Some of you cost out to your brothers that started business for you. Some of you cost out to your managers, your guy. Because you thought there was a Biafra coming where if anybody has uh, 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 three cars, they will divide it and give you all one one. All the buildings, if you have three buildings, they will divide it amongst and give you one one. You've been deceived. Because Guinea, Guinea, why were you deceived with that? Because you like to eat where you did not soup. Eh? Happy and way, happy and way. You guys been doing it for years. You will take your August money and run to Italy and go there and be picking tomatoes for 20 years and you manage to finish house. You guys are going through hell for no reason. Hell for no reason. The job has been done. Like my sister said, you don't go in your kitchen and whip a referendum because that's what some people did and they make a whole lot of money. I know how much money we put in referendum following people that, that their, their strategy, one is in their pocket, one is in Ngega where their mother is cooking and the other one is in the uh, uh, Caribbean Sea. We didn't ask for strategy because okay. our people, oh, no, no, no. Oh, you can't talk. Someone told me this. Hey, his spirit, don't ask him questions. Yeah. You can't and he's him. a doctor, he's a professor. Mm -hmm. He told me not ask your spirit. We kept asking, my dear. We kept asking. They said, Oh, it's done, is this, is that. But as we continue, before that, no road. We say, How can you have referendum committee and you're taking money from us and there's no plan? Where is the plan? And we disbanded that committee. In IPOB, we said, We are not contributing a dime again in this stupid committee that you could set up just to collect money. These are the when we started discovering the fraud that IPOB was. I knew that it was just to distract our people. So for those that still have their brain in their head, better go and start getting it where you dropped it. So the phases we are telling you, we don't want to run through it. I want to look at the one of 2011 to May 2015. Mm -hmm. It testified regional actions towards self-determination. We had international, inter-regional cohesion we have intra-regional cohesion trying to talk to people on the ground our team traveled to interior places to go and meet all the ethnic nationalities because what we're saying is that each ethnic nationality even if we are 500 whatever we are you will be represented because you know what you have your identity you have your language you have your territory you have your map of the Igbos. We are not, we, nobody will say, oh, if I say an Igbo woman, everybody knows where my land is located. Yoruba people, do you know where the Ijo, Ishekiri, Tiv. You see, under the 1999 constitution and under the Nigeria, they, they mix up. 
the so-called ethnic minorities were swallowed up by the major ones. That's what they'll tell you. Oh, Nigeria is made of three tribes, Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba. Lie! Where are the rest of our people? And that is why Nina said no. Nobody will speak for any other person. You only speak for yourself. Stand on your land as an ethnic person. I'm a job, stand on your land. I'm Thief, stand on Thief land because you need to protect your land. You need to protect your ancestral heritage. And that is what UN said mm -hmm. under the UN Declaration for Indigenous People's Rights. Mm -hmm. So we are following international protocol. This is not the stupid politics of blind, bleeding blind. <laughs> you go to the phase four. You talk about regional, national, and global outreach. We have done that. That's why I saw our team go to Washington, D.C. And we have videos and pictures and everything to show you what happened there. That's called international imperative. There's another uh, uh, thing we pull up for you after this one that we broke it into 16 boxes. It was broken, not we. We inherited it. <laughs> because when we came, they had finished all these things. We just joined. We saw, hey, this makes sense. We joined. So the people before us, they worked. And then we came and said, this is good. We saw many ideas. Then we followed the superior idea. And we looked at it, examined it. Brother Tony will not talk to us except we examine it. If we ask him questions, he'll say, have you read the document? And there were plenty. You know what? We sat down and did homework. That's why we can talk to you with boldness, with confidence, because we studied it. We asked questions. We examined it. You have not examined something, you come and say, how will Nina do this? How will Nina do it? It's all there in the plan, in the strategy. If you could sit your butt down and examine the strategy, you will see all the house inside it. Hmm. We did the homework, guys. We did the homework. So they met with all the stakeholders because we know that some people have been investing in Nigeria. In our land, people have been investing. We are not criminals. We don't want to steal their things and run away. No. People have invested. So they are stakeholders. Our team had to go and meet them, wherever they are. UNO, USO, EU, all that consultations, we are done. And you know what? The indigenous people paid for it. Because some people say, oh, who is funding you? Who is funding Ninas? The people. If you are an indigenous person and you know that your land is going to be taken, you will fund Ninas. And that's what we do as Daughters of Truth. Because we are Igbo women. As Igbo women, things do not happen in our land without, without us being involved. Our men involve us in what is going on. In our homes, we are involved. So we are not people that don't talk or not participate in what is going on. So we are part of the people funding Ninas, yes, because we are indigenous. We are indigenous. If you are an indigenous person, you are part of Ninas. You need to study it and so that you can, you, you can fund it. This is your project. Mass enlightenment, that is still going on. For people that come to platform and say, stop talking, no, stop talking. No, we have to continue to talk. <laughs> because it's talk they used to deceive all of you. They keep you yes. trust, they wash you. It's not talk that are talking to you. You don't mm -hmm. go to any Nigerian church that will end less than five hours. Our people mm -hmm. will go to church by 8 a.m. They will not finish the 3 p.m. They say Holy Spirit is leading them to stay five hours. You want that saying you don't know, brainwashing. At the end, hey, if you know that you're going to go to heaven, share hallelujah, you jump and shout. Hey, your day will be good. Amen. Hey, you make one million tomorrow. Amen. Based on what? What are you selling? <laughs> you are criminal. You are criminal. Mm. You get visa tomorrow. Amen. Is visa your father's land? Oh, the why, why, why are the white men, the white men, why are they not in your own land? Why are they not getting visa coming to your own land? All of you, your children are scattered everywhere and you're comfortable. And you're bragging. And you're bragging. So in that phase, you have the, the international lobbying, all this one, Washington consultation, all this ones we have done. That's what we told you. We are now in final. The charter of relationship, this is that they are already passed. Draft, everything. Done, dusted. We are now in the final phase, like we told you people. All these processes will happen before you get to referendum. Referendum is not what you scratch your head and say, eh, I think I want the referendum in the autopilot. I want the <laughs> referendum. What will precipitate the referendum? You think referendum is what you scratch your head and bring out? 
No, the work has been done. So if you are shouting referendum, know that you have to join the people that have done the work. Because referendum is the final phase of self-determination projects. But it would have started before now. And our people started 20 years ago working. Why you criminals? We are stealing. Stealing from the people. Maybe you can bring the next. So this phase now is the lobbying and campaigning for referendum and every day enlightenment, all the things that you're hearing now. That is the final phase of this assignment. And then severing territories and peoples of the lower Niger with fresh protocol. When you say sovereign territories, the consular force major that we did on the 16th of December 2020 is what brought out the sovereign territories, made them to come out. Now your sovereignty is on the table, waiting for you as an indigenous person, the indigenous people, to pick them. Your sovereignty has been given back to you. You need to pick it. Is it that you pick it or Fulani's will come and pick it? It's on the table. <laughs> it's done. Mm. So we are in the final phase, like we said, the terminal phase. Uh, there's another one, the, the 16 box, please. If you can pull up the fixed, uh, um, the 16 box. We are not going to go through it, but for you to see it, when you cite it, so that when you see this box, you now know, oh, this is Nina's project. Because people are plagiarizing our work. The work that Nina's have taken 20 years to do, people left, right, and said, not people, criminals. They want to reinvent the wheel. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do self-determination. Self-determination group based on what? What is, your <laughs> what is your strategy? From where to where? Just because you are you are you are, you are a criminal and you don't want to follow the protocol, follow in line in what is going on. No, you want to do your own. You create group and stop group and name it. Keep naming it. Oh, this one, this one, this one alliance, this one self-determination, this one a referendum. This one. What is wrong with the black people? A process. Mm. So this is another one. This 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 is 16 box. And we have told you that 13 of this, you know, if you count it, one, two, three, all the boxes, 13 have been done, completed. All the things, because your first major, everything is part of it. Where we are now is 13, 15 combined. And there are 16 boxes, like we told you. 14, 15 box. That's where we are. Finalizing the charter of relationship and all the, the uh, necessary consultations that will take place. So you are distracting us with your P2B. And we are telling you, you need to move where we are going. Because the bus is moving. When you see what Governor Autumn did in Benue, it's because his people backing him understand the secrets. For Ndibu, that would like to follow any charlatan. You like to fall victim. You see, because when you're not informed, you'll be victim because people will cheat you. If you're going inside market and you know the original handbag and the original shoe, they will not cheat you. But if you're ignorant, you don't know, they will cheat you and you'll be a victim. And they start crying, hey, well, see, this man cheated me. He duped me of my money because you're ignorant. But if you were informed, you will not. So some people say, why is it that my people are always victim of all these criminals? Because <laughs> they fail to get informed. Yeah. You come here to teach you so that you get informed. When you get informed, you make what we call informed decision. When you're signing your consent, you want it to be informed consent. No abracadabra. So autumn speaks with so much boldness and act with so much boldness. Why? Because his people are backing him up. You he heard him say in that video that his traditional rulers are with him, that the church leaders are with him, that ordinary people of Benue State are with him. These are the people, it's called the people's mandate. When you have the people's mandate, you can now move legally because power belongs to the people. So because the people are informed, his people are informed, they pushed him to do the right thing. Not empty noise or boastful noise that we are seeing. Boastful noise indeed. You're boasting over nothing. You don't know where you're going. You're just boasting, talking trash. And making us look like stupid people. 
And we are not stupid people. We are intelligent people. We are, some of us are really educated. Because the thing about education is that when you go through school, school should go through you. So that whatever you learned in class, you can use it in outside the class to apply it in solving problems. That's the sense of going to school. Not to mm. go and tell your people, I have 10 degrees. We have degree one, degree two, master's in this, doctorate in this, PhD this, PhD in 20 places. That's not it. The <laughs> essence of going to school is to acquire knowledge. Superior knowledge. I use it Superior in knowledge case. that you can use. So if you went to school and you cannot use whatever you learned in school to solve your physical problems, then you did not go to school. Mm -mm. Our mothers in the village are better than you. Much because better. our mothers apply critical reasoning. They are able to reason. And they will say it. So please, we are begging people that are plagiarizing Nina's work. Please stop. This is special appeal to all of you. You will say something that Nina's has been saying that you know you learned from Nina's team. It's Nina's that made you know the constitution is the problem. But you will not confirm and say, according to Nina's. Oh, Nina's is right. Nina's has been right. It's a Fulanese. It's a Fulanization project. It's a Islamization project. According to, because you have to base what you're saying on an existing authority. Nina's has become an authority representing the indigenous peoples. So those of you that will go organize yourself and put indigenous inside it, that does not make you an authority. You organize yourself and say, oh, I put alliance because Nina has put alliance. That's not what it is. This is not a, 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 a purification. Copy, copy, copy. Happy and way, copy, copy. Exactly. That's not what it is about. Because you know what? You cannot be stealing other people's work and call yourself that you're a vanguard of truth. You're not a vanguard of truth. You are a liar. You are a criminal. In fact, you are worse than the criminal Nigerian leaders that we are fighting against. You are evil for trying to mess up the only potent tool against the enemy of the people. You turn around, re try to reinvent the wheel, delaying our people, wasting time when you know that now they can't waste our time for over 10 years. Collected money that our people would have used to do something. Kept as people telling them, Akukom Bagaba, Ajambene. What we call Akukifo. Telling them stories when he had no plan. He told yeah. them, I have, I know three things. Which of four knows two. You know only one. And you are following such a man? Chai! You would have asked him, what is the third thing that you know? What is the third thing that you know? And we are still saying, it's not going to go like that. Too. Whoever that is listening to me, go and tell him the Kanu where he is. He should come and tell our people that third thing that he knew. Which I believe is this Nina's project. Because he knew about Tony Nadi and he knew about Nina's project. But he kept it from our people because he wanted to make money from our people and distract them from the only way that will lead them out. This is confession time. Nam, mm. can go and confess to our people how you deceived them. When there was no plan that you had for freedom, you're deceiving them. And you're still deceiving them and they're following you. Come and confess. Tell our people the truth. Peter Obi, tell our people the truth. Obasanjo, tell our people the truth. Go on, tell our people the truth. IBB, tell our people the truth. Church leaders, tell our people the truth. You people should start confessing now. Because full and knees are coming and heads will roll. Then you know why heads will roll? Because you fail to speak the truth. That's the only reason they will succeed in killing our people. Because if you tell our people the truth, this is the way. You see, you begin to turn around from your evil ways. Begin to allow our people to follow the only road that can free everyone. Everyone will be taken care of. The only pathway that will lead to self-determination. All roads cannot lead to self-determination for those that are deceiving yourself. Because this is what they tell that people. Tony, be doing your own. Let him be doing his own. 
You have seen where he has landed us into. Professors telling us. Professors. Be doing your own. You cannot be doing yes and no. You cannot be doing lie and truth and then end up in the right place. No. Ninas is the only road to self-determination. You know why? Because they have done all the assignments that needed to be done over the years to where we are now. That will not take us to self-determination and referendum. You don't get self-determination by standing on top of your table and shouting, self-determination, self-determination three times. No. You would have put a process in place. And that process is what will now lead to the self-determination and referendum. Which you don't have any 22 more years to give. You don't have 22 more years to begin again. So stop trying to reinvent the way because you want to steal from our people. You want to make money from our people. Mm. Referendum. Oh, oh, oh. Through the face of the struggle, Kamara no Wagun are in charge of what is being exactly. done. Exactly. Mm. It will involve years of steps and processes that you put in place. You would have put in place before now. So you can't start now when the enemy is at the doorstep waiting to kill us. Every other road is a copycat road. And you know where it will lead you to? Evil forest. Where you will be robbed. And your hard earned money taken from you, and you will probably be kidnapped, like it's already happening in the southeast. When people want to go for burial now in the southeast, uh, marriage or whatever, they are careful because they will, some are not even going anymore because they will be kidnapped. Criminals are everywhere. How did they come about? Somebody recruited them and promised them freedom. And our politicians, we are part of that scheme. Yep. Let us start confessing. Church leaders. I heard that Joseph Kano got a taste of his own criminality. Oh, what happened? Somebody, some people attacked him or okay. something. I said, okay, okay. Well, welcome to the neighborhood. He hasn't yeah. started. This is, the, this is the beginning. They will kidnap him. Okay. Yes, it will get there. Because if the elites, it is the job in other countries, the job of the elites, the so-called educated, the enlightened, to make the system in such a way that the poor masses will be taken care of. But instead of doing that, you are duping the poor masses, stealing from them, promising them what you cannot give. They are very best of this world. The soluders of this world. You are professors. You know you cannot build on nothing. You know that. But you are deceiving He swears swear to uphold and defend the constitution. Okay. That's what he's there for. So it's going to backfire. That's what we're telling you. And when it backfires, do you know who the first victims will be? You, you people that starved the poor people. Because they say, he that is down need fear no fall. Because my people are already on the ground, dying on daily basis. It's you that elevated yourself. They will push down that table that you're standing on top. Everybody will collapse on the ground. But today, you can change it if we can embrace the Nina's movement. Examine the protocol. Go to the website. By the way, we have the clubhouse coming up tomorrow evening, 7 p.m. Nigerian time. It's like a workshop. It's called Restore Nations Clubhouse. As I go and look for it in Clubhouse. Follow them. Because that's where information, workshops will be going on on a daily basis. They also record the meetings. So that if you get there anytime, you will have what to listen to and your brain will begin to receive some sanity. And then when we talk, it will make sense to you. And then when you look, you will see deeper, not just carrying microphone. Everybody shouting. Everybody wants to talk. What are you talking? What you don't know? Go ahead, my sister. No, go ahead. I'm trying to pull that link for the um, this thing. I'm okay. To... All right. So please, um, we welcome, we thank those of you that join us today. Um, you can call. This is now time for you to prepare to call. We'll put our number also. Even when we send out our promo, our number is there. There's also on, a number on that promo that will lead. If you want to be a workforce in this NINAS project, NINAS means Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Indigenous Peoples. I mean, for self determination, sorry. For self determination, Nigerian Indigenous and Nationalities Alliance for self determination. So, it is for us, and this work is going on. 
So if you want to be part of the workforce, there's a number that we send out. If you see Doctors of Truth promo, look down, you see that number, send a text there. Say where you're located, this is why you're calling and everything. Somebody will respond to you. Then the Restore Nation Clubhouse is for constant workshop and training. For those that want to, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I want to get informed. Then we have a lot of materials, videos. Go to YouTube. Go to our website, Daughters of Truth website. We have our videos. If you watch our show, we try to make our show to be compact. We have all the information so that if you watch one video of Daughters of Truth, you will begin to understand what is going on. We do it, we do that intentionally. That's why our videos, you know, get long. So be to call plus one seven seven four three three eight zero nine four two plus one seven seven four three three eight zero nine four two is both normal direct line and WhatsApp. Call and you can ask questions. So far, the question you're asking is in line with what we are talking. Please don't go and ask us question about Obano Uruku. This is not the, what the show is all about. We are not here to sell you lipstick or to sell you pancake. No. Self-determination. That's what we're talking about. So if you are calling in, please let your conversation be on self-determination. Let's talk. Let's talk. Ask questions. Ask meaningful questions and you will get meaningful answers. Thank you. Should I... Um, Thank you so much. So my, we can read some of the things that our people uh, posted while we were waiting okay. for them to call in. Oh, okay. uh, we, we've seen a couple of new people here. Actually, we, you know, we do welcome you guys to the program, but this is a program where you're supposed to learn. It's like, you know, when you go from the class in your village and you were admitted into Harvard, the first thing you do is to observe what is going on. You don't go there and start making noise on our or to speak on our or can email on all kinds of stuff. No. If you're smart enough, you actually observe the environment and see what's going on. You cannot, it's not a must that you must speak, because that is one of the big things that we we suffer from, brown people. You don't have to speak. The smartest person is the one who sit down and observe what is going on. I remember seeing one FBI patient one time, and he was each time I talked to this guy, he would sit. Uh, not the be a CIA. He will sit and uh, be quiet before he responds. I'm like, what kind of conversation is going on? <laughs> so after a while, I asked him, I said, why is it that you wait a while before you respond to me? He said, oh, he's retired. He was a retired uh, CIA guy. He said, oh, this is how we are trained, that everything that we hear, we need to process it, speak what we are going to speak to our brain first, and then say it out. That's so sublimant. <laughs> okay. He said, but you're smart for even, you know, figuring that out because it's not like he was waiting 10 years to answer. I bet I noticed that he was a little bit delayed before he responded. So observation goes a long way. So it's not a must that once you come into the platform, you start asking, see what is going on, you know, understand what is being asked. And then you can start asking questions because if you start with question first, then you may seem like you're so lost when you haven't even heard half of the words. So um, this is a good time to call in. Uh, like we said, you're going from hearing trash to actually hearing something that is tangible, that is, uh, you know, substantial, something that you can do something with. We are not a regular show where we are gossiping about things happening in the village and all that stuff. We're actually telling you this is the way forward. This is the way out. And the good thing is that we have, we are not here to deceive you. We're not here to benefit from it. We are not asking you to give us stars and give us circles and give us this thing. Our main goal, our main purpose is for you to understand what we need, understand the good news, and then share it. The same way you guys like to be sharing your the, the, the Papa Gio's information, share the good news for those that didn't listen. We've always encouraged you guys to engage your church leaders, you know, engage your politi politicians, because a lot of them, when you meet them one-on-one, -on -one, you find out that they don't know. They think our problem is uh, hunger. Give them food and all the problem will go away. That's all they think it is, you know. But they know that it's a system that allowed them to steal all the wealth for themselves and build their mansion in Abuja that the, uh, the DSS will break the roof to come in through. But they will tell my people that all they need is food. So we need to do better. We need to add better. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to weigh in the options that we have and then come up with superior arguments. And because you're weighing options doesn't mean that you do understand the superior agreement. The superior agreement is the one that will stand the test of time. 
the one that will be uh, uh, the, remain the same. And if anybody with any good sense comes in, they will say, "Oh yeah, that's it right there. That's it right there." You know, let's go with the flow. So, um, if you are, you know, want to call in, the number is there on the screen. If not, we'll call it a day. I think we've done a good job so far. Uh, continue to share this information with our people. Continue to like and subscribe and all that, uh, whatever else that needs to be done. Uh, we need to go home, my people. We need to go home. Uh, for me, I need jobs for my young ones. I don't want the... Uh, I saw this young boy yesterday that graduated uh, with a bachelor's in economics. They own a rakra. He's there selling rakra with his friend. And I'm not saying selling rakra is bad, but the boy is working hard for him, for him to even to come up with that idea of selling rakra. But I don't want my boy, my boys, my young ones, to finish selling. He said he's one of the seven uh, children, uh, one of the seven children that he parents uh, um, ha ha have, and he wanted to be able to, he's the only one, that, he's the first one that went to college, so he's selling Accra so he can help the, the next person to go to college. I'm like, which college? But it's good that he went, at least he learned something to th think about business, but I want more for him. He studied economics, I need him in the bank, I need him in the office of, uh, uh, the what is it called? I don't know, the economic planning office. We need him to use what he has. Obviously, he got a lot of zeal for him to think, oh, I can sell Accra by the park and make money. His, his goal is to expand it and make like almost a franchise of Accra, which is good. So look at how smart he is already, even with the little that he's given. So we want more for people like that. You know, we want more for our doctors. We don't want you guys to finish school and relocate to, to Saudi Arabia. We want more. We want our young ones, these ones that are at the top of the class, to be given all the you know resources that they need to fly beyond heavens. We need all of that, you know. So these things are important to us. We don't want a situation where only our children are progressing. Everybody will send their children to Bodo, but buy them expensive, have give them car, allow them to be doing whatever back there, and then the other ones they haven't been to school for six months. They have not done anything tangible for six months and life moves on mind you if your obituary wins and you happen not to die you will suffer for four more years and then another four years that's eight years of your life so if you're 21 today by the time they finish dealing with you you will be 29. is that even fair so we want more for our people and that's where this passion is coming from um you know we do want to thank uh, our brother tony nadi and ninas and lnc for the work they are doing, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of people coming, they want to be heard, they want to be part of the program, they will still want part of it and run into evil forests. The good thing, like Sister we said, is that what we're doing is a movement. And it's something that you can do in the neck of your woods. So you don't have to uh, have principal officers and chairperson, no. You understand the project, you say, ah, no election here until you fix this 1999 constitution. That's how we know you've gotten it. We are not doing an election. If everybody that is, you know, knowledgeable about what is holding Nigeria down, they said it's this 1999 constitution. So, Peter Obi, if you love us, we are following you. If you love us, please, let's fix this 1999 constitution. Please, Peter Obi, then you can go for an election and God knows we will vote for you because we know by then we have put things in place for you to steal our resources and pack it in London for your children. We have put in place things in place for you not to be building the biggest mall in Africa, in Abuja. We have put things in place for you not to be stealing stuff and packing them to South Africa to create jobs. Then I promise you with a new constitution, they wouldn't even want to be part of the, uh, uh, they wouldn't even want to be politicians anymore because you will be held accountable. You will be held accountable. That's why every one of them is running from this. Why is it that no, none of these politicians are talking about 1999 because they are all running from it because they know it's the one thing that will keep them upright by fire, by thunder. And it will stop them from stealing. So <laughs> that's the only thing that will stop what is going on, the mess that is going on. They know it. So we need our ignorant people to receive sense. Stop. We are not here. Being sentiment is not a strategy. Be emotional, reactive is not a strategy. Being loud with your English, use of English language is not a strategy. You guys have used it long enough. You use it long enough. You know there's criminality going on. Then you want to carry more pole and go somewhere. And then when they shoot you, start screaming. No, that's not a strategy. We need to use logic and reasons 
we have to face that truth that we've been running from. It's like a child who went and break the father's car and you're coming back. You have to come home and say, Daddy, I know you told me not to drive that car. I had an accident when I took it. Gabe does solve what the problem. Daddy now will call the insurance company. He may make you get a second job so that you will pay for the, the, the new, new car. He may want you to pay extra car note for the car. Whatever it is, you just need to face it. Broken car and be running around the neighborhood. So I can the car. That's not a strong. It's call a spade, a spade a spade so we can move forward. So we can move forward. So thank you. It's been nice. Uh, we are all in this together. That's one thing I love, love about what we are doing. We are all stakeholders. So we are not here to command and control you. We're here for you to understand the uh, document, ask the appropriate questions, and let's arrive with superior arguments, and then we bounce. Okay? We need to bounce. Time is of essence. We need to bounce. Go ahead, sisters. Closing. Yes, speech. we need to bounce. By <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And it's so the, the beauty of what we're doing is that this is like the whole universe is responding to what we're doing. It's as if, where have you been? And that's where we're calling people because it's truth. Truth is constant. Lie has expiry dates. Give it time, it will expire. But truth is constant. More people will awake and join truth. That's how it is. And then that is how worlds and systems are changed. Mm -hmm. truth. Find out the truth. Don't just because they said they said. No. Even the Bible you are reading, please go and read it by yourself. Don't wait for them to use it to dupe you and cheat you. Go and read it by yourself and stand on the truth that you know. Because you know what? The truth you know we make you free. Thank you very much. Take thank care. you. Thank you. I have the link for the Nina's Clubhouse. Please join us tomorrow so you can learn even more. And yeah. the good thing is that uh, the uh, brother Tony is there and he will take live, you know, he'll take questions directly from yes. the audience. Yes. So stay safe, take care of yourself and each other. And I always want to use this last time to emphasize, even if the government, the universe, uh, British enterprises against us. We do not need to be against each other. No. Find a way to, you know, care for your neighbors, what you're not using, give to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Let's cut down on the wickedness. Yes. Let's begin to heal each other. Let's begin to heal our hearts. Let's begin to take care of our, you know, people around us any way that we can. So we are not asking for you to do anything evil. Whatever it is that you can use to help another human being, whether it's the mango in front of your house falling down, as the woman, the widow that doesn't have anything to do, come and collect the mango and go and sell. Whatever you can do, think about it. You know, it's right in your face. Let's do it so we can help our people move forward during this difficult time. Yes. Until next week, we'll see you guys. Bye-bye.